Hi friends, it's Pam with Silver and Sparkles. And I have a fun project for us today. So I am making these flippy, um, shabby chic, vintagey style um, flips to add to a journal. And I've already made a few and they can open up different ways. Um, and then we're gonna make a few more to finish out. Um, I want one on every um, spread in this little journal that I've made. So let me show you this too. Um, I'm actually making this as a design team project for Sylvia at Las Mimas Amores, and I'm using two of her new kits for October. And one kit is named Fragile, and the other is She. And they all have all these fun, vintagey looking pages, images of ladies um, sewing, um, and, and, and other other things. <laughs> um, I love all the script. Um, I just, I think they're so pretty, the florals. Anyway, there's a lot to look at, and I will have her Etsy shop linked for you in the description. So I just used some of the pages, there are horizontal ones, there's vertical ones, there's lots of pictures and things. I've got a bunch of the pieces cut out here because we're gonna make some of these clusters. Um, but yeah, I, I made this tab style journal. I sewed on some of my vintage lace. I kinda like how I did that, I've never done that before. Um, and then when I was making these, I was gonna just you know decorate the pages with these really larger clusters that are kind of you know flippy and flappy and then I thought well instead of just gluing them down let's make them into journaling spots because of the way I did the pages you know there's already a lot of script and things on there not that we can't take like a piece of you know coffee dyed paper and you know cover up a portion I just thought well this is a way where you still get to look at the pretty paper right but um have all of these fun interactive elements. So that's what we're making today. Um, if you want to know how to make a tab style journal like this, uh, I have um, videos about how to do that and I will link them or at least link one of them for you in the description. You can also search my channel. Um, it's one of the tutorials for the tab style binding. Okay, so let's get started. I'm really excited about how this is turning out. So to make these clusters, like I said, I just got several um, of the pages and some of the ones that, like I said, there's some vertical and some horizontal. I just went ahead and I actually used my ruler and I tore these pieces so that they're all different sizes. They have nice rough edges that I've inked and I just think they look really old and vintagey. And I wanted to pick two or three uh, to make some different large clusters. And I'm not worried about having too much of a neutral piece just yet because we're going to add that when we actually attach it to the journal page. So I am, and I'm also having fun using little bits of lace and fabric and things like that to layer in with the images. And I even put, I've got a couple of little just number labely tag kind of things that we can add as well if we want to. So I am just gonna cut a little piece of lace and we will um, set that aside out of the way. And I'll show you, like I said, I just sort of started not really thinking too much about it, but just seeing the layers that I like. And you can, if you don't have lace, you could skip this, this piece because I think it looks really good just with all the different images and things. I kind of want to see the little bit of the writing. And then I'm just taking my stapler, and sometimes I'm covering the staple up, sometimes I'm not even worrying about it. Um, 
and just get, getting them started and then we can add more and bows and things like that. I will say, oh, that barely grabbed this one. So I'm gonna have to put another one in here. Um, this one will be one that flips up. Wh whichever way you want it to flip, whether you want it to flip, uh, let's see, open left or right, or if you want it up, up this way, the edge needs to be even. So like this edge won't work to make it a flip. They, 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 the edge needs to be even. So we'll make the next one where we can flip like the way a page turns, but this will be one that'll flip up like this, okay? Now I didn't worry about printing on the other side. You could have if you wanted a, a neutral or something like that, but I, I didn't worry about that. So you'll see mine aren't like that. Let's grab just for fun. I think I'll put a little number label on here. And this is the PVA art, or no, PVA Line Co. Brand, brand glue. And um, I also have my glue gun out and I was using it quite a bit um, as well, especially when I have a lot of layers with the fabric and things, it was just work, I was able to work more quickly than waiting for my Fabrifix glue uh, to, to dry, but this will also work really well with your laces and fabrics. So for this one, I had this out, and I don't know, it sort of goes with our theme, but it's a little, ooh, I like this piece. It's, it's a little crazy, but you know, why not? Why not do crazy? I, I layered one with this piece of like, fishnet kind of material. I'm just having fun today using all kinds of different things. So I hope you guys enjoy. I've been really on a big fall kick. I still am. I can't help it. I love fall. So I'll probably have more, more, more projects to come <laughs> with my fall papers and crafts and things. But I'm also really starting to spend some time on my craft fair items. So I'm probably going to just do a video showing y'all some of the things that I've made. Most everything that's like the kind of like the little favors for the craft fair. Hmm. I wonder if my glue gun got turned. No, nope, there it goes. I was like, did it get turned off somehow? Um, the like the favors, like I've got some tea favors and some chocolate, um, favors, things like that I have gotten from other creators on YouTube, one in particular that I really like. And so if you want to see how to make them, I would want you to go watch her videos, right? Because she's fabulous. Um, I'm going to cut that off just a little bit. So anyway, but I know I said I may, might show you guys some of the things that I'm making. So um, I, I have that in the works. The craft fair I'm doing is not, we're gonna set this one aside, uh, is not um, until the end of November, so I've got plenty of time, but I am spending quite a bit of time working on that. All right, we're gonna do one that's gonna open, um, like, like a book page opens. So I'm gonna use this larger piece here. And I'm just, like I said, I'm just digging through. How about we do this telephone, and then maybe one of the little bit smaller images. And you know, we could even do something like this. <laughs> this might be fun. Um, I will staple her. I'm out of staples. How does this always happen when I'm on camera? Okay, we're gonna fill the stapler really quick. You can use a regular old stapler if you want to. If I could find mine, sometimes I would probably choose to use it, but I am using my little Tim Holtz tiny attacher with the little tiny staples and they are fun. It's kind of nice having the little bitty ones and I have, I'm going to probably jinx myself by saying this. This one has never jammed on me and I don't know about you guys, my staplers jam and don't work great, but one of the things it said in the instructions when I first bought this is to only put one row of staples in, even though more would fit, right? And to prevent it from jamming. And I thought, hmm, so I've always only put one row in. I don't know if that's really what has 
kept us or kept me from having an issue, but we're going to stay with that just in case. All right. So we want to, what, this is going to be the piece that we attach the hinge to here in a few minutes when we start attaching these to the journal and I can have things come this way, but I, what I don't want is to start having them hang off. If, if I had this one hang off this way, I would put the hinge on this piece of paper. So um, if you want it to wrap the hinge and open this way, we would put the hinge on this side. And again, you just kind of want to pay attention. So I'm going to do this one where we're going to have the hinge on the left side. We can do another one with a right hinge, even though I think it makes sense just in case, just in case it would be helpful. Um, and I did like this little flowery fabric scrap that I pulled out and I've just been, I only did one with this, but I thought it was super pretty. So we may, we may put a piece of this on here, especially since her picture was kind of off center, which I like. I like things that aren't perfect. And maybe, let's see, I had a little piece of lace just sitting there. Okay, so this one's gonna end up with several staples and that's okay. Okay, and it's stapled well. And I don't know if this one needs a bow. Maybe it does, because why not, right? So let's do one out of this twine. I did one that's already in the book using some baker's twine, and that was really cute. And I have all that baker's twine that I got in my box that I, uh, craft supply stash box that I purchased um, in all different colors but I didn't get those out. I have a lot of just fun fibers and scraps and pieces out, but um, I need to give that hot glue some time to dry too. Anyway, all right, we're gonna go with that. I'm not gonna put a little tag or anything on that one. All right, let's make another one, and this time with the hinge on the right side. And again, these can be whatever size you just randomly tear your papers to. This has some little bitty pieces. I love all these vintage sewing machine images. I think they're really, really cute. Um, this is a pretty piece of lace. Let's put this. Actually, we need to kind of put some things maybe to this side since I'm gonna put the hinge over here. Just kind of have to keep that in mind as we go. Um, anything else for now I do like and I did this with another one I'm gonna tear this advertising piece and we'll go ahead and ink it and let's layer that under this picture and the piece of lace we'll do the piece of lace a little off and we'll go here how does that look i hope you guys like it i think we're gonna go for it and hopefully get all the layers i did okay now this one let's put let's put the tag up there because i haven't done that in a while all right and we'll call this one done. So we've got a hinge on the right, a hinge on the left, a flip of a flap up, and then let's just do one more. We'll see how it lands because I think I needed four more to finish this journal. So we'll do another top hinge. Okay, and let's see. I just got a bunch of random stuff. Ooh, maybe we'll add a little blue in. It's got a little little bit of blue coming through there. Um, cute, right? And all of these things, like I said, if, if you like some of the idea, if it speaks to you, great. If you're like, eh, not my style, then skip that part. You can make these same type of big clusters with other types, you know, of images too. So I, I really like all these vintage images, but if you 
like a different style, go for that. All right, I wonder if one of these will look cool. I kind of like it when they peek out. So we'll just glue it down on the larger piece. Okay, and again, keep going if you want to add more, make it, make it look pretty. Let's see, and I wanted to, I hadn't thought about this. I was hoping to use one of these little coins somewhere and they've got some little beads. I have no idea. Let's see, I'm going to just cut one off. Yeah, why not? I think there's a piece of tape on the, um, I think it's to keep it from fraying, but we're taking that off. I didn't like that. Yep, here it goes, it's starting to fray. <laughs> I'm gonna trim it off and we will add a drop of this to it. This is that um, fray check stuff, whoa. And it dries um, pretty quick. But it's probably better not to get it on your fingers like I just did. Ugh, it smells awful. Okay, I am going to use the hot glue and stick it right on that staple. And then this one will be done. Fun, different. The hot glue probably would have kept that from fraying too, but okay. And if you want to see any of the supplies that I'm using, um, most of them are linked in my Amazon storefront, not all of them, um, but you can find that in the description as well. And it's an affiliate link. So if you do end up making a purchase, I will get a few pennies, but no, no need to do that. And like, you can just go window shop and get some ideas if that's helpful, only if it's helpful to you guys. All right, so now I'm gonna use some of my coffee dyed paper for us to have, turn this into some journaling spots with these fun flips. Okay, so I'm kind of doing one per spread. So we need one on this page. And let's do, I think, is this the one? Yeah, this is the one I said we were gonna do with a hinge to the left. <laughs> this one with a hinge to the left. So I also want a piece of paper that will work well for some journaling space. And that looks nice layered together. And since I'm not completely gluing this down, when we open it up, you'll still get to see that pretty pattern. And that's part of what I liked about this idea. So now what we need is a strip of paper that is approximately either the, the, the height or the width of the paper that's going to be the flip. So I'm just going to now tear that. And mine are usually about an inch wide. And my ruler is an inch wide. So we will just tear this. And then I have this little piece that I can use you know, to write some quotes or words or use on another project for something. All right, so see, it's about the same height as our cluster main um, bottom piece that we're gonna attach the hinge to. So this is, like I said, about an inch wide and you just fold it in half. And it doesn't have to be exactly perfect. Mm set this up here out of the way and I want it to open this way so we are going to attach the hinge with the fold to the edge so it, it opens up okay so this side we're gonna add our glue to and again you can use whatever adhesive I wouldn't do a glue stick but you know you could use the hot glue you can use your wet white glue oh all right, and again, you want the fold right up to the edge of this cluster that we made, just like that, all right? Because now we're gonna add glue to this side and then put it on the page where we want it, and then it's going to open. And then I'll show you what we're gonna do with our journaling paper. So again, be um, neat but generous with your glue and I'm gonna put it kind of right up to the lace I'm gonna open it up so that we can just really press down well okay, it's 
so cute. And then what I did with these is I just put a strip of glue, a strip, a line of glue, strip, I don't know, maybe that's a word, a line of glue, just like that, and just kind of put it, nestled it right in there um, into that hinge. And now, of course, I need to let it dry, but this paper can flip up as well. But when you do your flip, you see your writing space. Isn't that precious? All right, everything's dry. I just love it. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and install the others. Let's do a top flip. So it is the same exercise. Just decide where on the paper you want it. And pick a piece that's going to be your writing paper. That looks nice. And then let's find a piece, that one will work, that can serve as the hinge. And I'm using the copy dyed paper just because I want it to kind of match my aesthetic. But really you can use any, you know, any paper that you want. You could use, if you were doing a different style, right? Like a fun pattern paper. I could use some strips from this kit um, to be the hinges instead of the coffee dyed paper. It, it really, it doesn't matter. So again, if you don't have coffee dyed paper, that's okay. You can pick something else. And you just wanna make sure when you're putting these in, you're not getting um, crossing over where your journal pages have to open and close. If you want some hanging off the sides, that would be okay. All right, so now we have this one. And this is where I said you don't want anything because it'll mess up your flap. And what's happening here is that coin flipped up, but it's all right. It's, it's not gonna keep it from working. All right, I'm gonna put glue on this side because I kind of liked this little um, spot right here. I wanted to be able to see it. Okay. That makes me happy. Oh my goodness, I'm loving this. I may have to just do like a little flip through for Instagram or something of this one because it is making me very happy. All right, we have one more. Oh, we have two more. So this one could, I think I had said we were gonna do a left hinge, right? And then this is another um, top, top one. I think I'm gonna put this one here and put it way up to the top because we haven't done that yet before, or I haven't done that yet. And um, now I don't want this to cover up her face. So we're gonna trim this one off and use it as our hinge. Just tear it right off, fold it in half. See how once you kind of get going, these just come together. I hope y'all will make some. I think it's just, a, again, maybe it's a little over the top that I'm putting one on every spread in the journal. Um, but I just, I got excited and I thought, well, this is just gonna be so cool. Um, it's like a little bit of theme, but even if you just added like one of these um, or a couple of these to a larger journal, I think it just gives you another little element to play with. So, Again, it's just another idea. If you're not currently working on a journal, but you like this idea, you could make one of these and put it in your junk journal idea book. That looks good. And we have this last one left. And I'm gonna put it on this page and it's gonna open this way. Um, you know, you really can. Now I'm gonna make this hinge a little shorter than the paper, because it does work. Just to show you that too. You know, you can use some of your scraps and things you have on hand. Um, but yeah, you could make one out of just scraps on your desk and put it in your junk journal idea book so you can remember it. And I may have to go back and do that in mine because I haven't really done flips and clusters like this before. Um, I've done clusters, I've done flips, but this is just a little different. Okay, and now I want a piece of journaling paper. Let's see, this one will be cute hanging down a little low. 
All right, and I still have lots of fun papers from this kit to play with. I think I'm even gonna, I installed one like this before where it's a little, I don't know, it's kind of covering up that pretty blue flower though. Hmm, maybe we'll do it that way. Nope, I'm gonna go right to the top of the card. Ah, sometimes it's just hard to decide. Hard to decide. So I'm gonna put it right there so it's not peeking out. It's covering up the blue flower a little bit, but if you lift it up, you can still see the pretty blue flower. Okay. All right. So I love this. I may I may add another little dauble of hot glue here for this beaded trim. I um don't think it's gonna go anywhere but I do think that'll hold it a little bit better. I'm really good at burning myself. You can see I have ink all over me and I burned my pinky earlier, but it was worth it. I love it. Okay, so again, we made cluster flip journaling spots. I think that's what you call those. Um, in this really pretty new journal that I've just made with two of the newest kits from Sylvia. So go check out her Etsy shop. I know she'll appreciate it. Um, again, I'm going to put that link in the description for you to take you to her shop. And I'll put the names of the kits I used. All right. Thanks, everybody. Please leave me a comment. Give the video a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel um, and tell me what's going on with you. All right. Thanks, everybody. Till next time. Bye-bye.